Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, got another email from a viewer that definitely requires a tutorial for a response. It's from Waldemar, and Waldemar says, Hi Kevin, I'm an editor that's been working in the film industry editing feature films, trailers, and so on that have mainly been on Final Cut Pro 7 with the occasional Avid project for more than six years now. But with Apple's recent upgrade to FCPX, I'm now redirecting all my work to Avid's Media Composer, and I found your tutorials very helpful along the way. Although I find myself able to do pretty much everything and more in Avid as I did in FCP, I've been encountering difficulties in finding the right way to simply export audio splits inside of Media Composer 6. For example, after cutting a trailer, I'd like to be able to export out a quick time to the client that has all the audio mixed downs into splits. Channel 1 dialogue, channel 2 narration, channel 3 sound effects, channel 4 music. I find this quite easily patched and done in FCP, but in Avid, I either don't know where to go to patch my tracks or my hardware does not have the capabilities to do this task. He's running a Mac Mini, Mac OS X 10.75, a 2.5 GHz Intel Core i5. Any suggestions or ideas why I cannot do this simple task? Is there a workaround like exporting out my mix down separately and linking them to the video after the fact? I'm usually very good at troubleshooting, but right now I'm surprised I can't find why this is not working. Either way, thanks in advance for taking the time to answer my questions. I really appreciate it, Waldo. Well, you know what, Waldo, don't worry. Believe it or not, it's actually very easy, but you have to think through what you're doing. It actually has nothing to do with the hardware in your system. It can all be done right from within the Media Composer or Symphony interface. Okay, let's just get into Symphony and let me show you how you're going to go about doing this. Okay, so let's Command and Tab into Avid Symphony, obviously Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. And the first thing that we're going to need is a sequence to work with. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open my sequences bin here. I'll hit Command and O on the Mac, Control and O for all my Windows friends out there. And let's just use some stock footage here. I'll just use some motocross clips. Doesn't even really matter what we use. I want to use a shot that's a little bit longer here. So why don't we just pick one that's, you know, even seven seconds is okay. So what I'm going to do is just select this entire clip because really the video doesn't matter here. I'm going to hit T on the keyboard to select the entire clip. I'm going to hit B on the keyboard to edit it into a new timeline. We'll just edit it into sequences right here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to have an eight channel audio output just for the purposes of this example. Because in many cases, what you might end up doing when you're going to output is either output, you know, a 5.1 file having left, right, center, sub, left surround, right surround, stereo left, and stereo right to make up eight channels. Or maybe what you're going to do instead is you're going to have narration on track one, dialogue on track two, stereo music on tracks three and four, stereo effects on five and six, and then stereo on seven and eight. So in many cases you might find yourself doing an eight channel output. So let's just use that as an example. So I'm going to create some new audio tracks by simply hitting Command and U on the keyboard to create eight audio tracks. Now what I'm going to do now for the purposes of audio is I'm just going to use tone. And how we create tone inside of Media Composer and Symphony is very easy. What I'm going to do is hit Command and 1, the number 1, at the top of the keyboard to call up the audio tool. All I'm going to do is just expand the audio tool out a little bit here. I'm going to come over to the peak hold. I'm going to drop that down. Right down here at the bottom is the very fantastic Create Tone Media. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create Tone Media at minus 20. I'm going to leave everything else actually the same except the number of tracks I'm just going to set at 2. We'll just have it as a stereo pair. What I'm going to do is simply say, OK, we'll stick it into the sequences bin for now, which is fine. Here's our audio. Now I'm just going to hit play here. Now I'm not recording the audio, but you can see that it's playing back at minus 20, which is fine. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go down one second. And we're just going to mark that as our output. You can see right up here our center duration is set to one second. I'm just going to edit this into tracks one and two. What we're going to do is we're going to auto patch into tracks three and four. We'll just come down a few frames. There we go. Exact same thing on five and six. And we're going to come down again, exact same thing on 7 and 8, just like that. Very cool. I'm just going to trim this down just because I don't need anything else where it's silent. 
There we go. And I'm ready to export this. Now what most people think they're going to do is simply select the entire sequence. They're going to right click. They're going to come down to export. Now right now I have this set up as a QuickTime reference. So I'm just going to come into options here for a second because what we want to do is we want to export a QuickTime movie. Now most people think that, okay, well I've got eight channels of audio so all I'm going to do is select video and audio. We're going to save this out. We're going to call this direct out just for the purposes of what we're doing. I'll say save and I'll stick it on the desktop for right now. We'll just call this direct out and we'll call it number one. I'm simply going to say save. You'll see that it goes through a very quick export process. Now what I'm going to do now is just AMA link to this clip so that we can see what's going on with it. I'm just going to select AMA link to files. There it is on my desktop. I'm just going to select it and say open. I'm going to bring this into my preview window here. You can see the problem I have right away. I only have two channels of audio. If I switch over here, you can see that if I switch to my audio waveforms, I can actually find them right here under audio data waveform. You can see those eight channels have been compressed down into two audio channels, a stereo pair, which is definitely not what we want. So how do we get this out of Media Composer and Symphony? There has to be a way. Most people think that this might be a hardware issue. Now I'm running uh, a brand new iMac. It's an i7. The only audio hardware that I have attached to it is the M Audio Fast Track Pro that you can hear my voice being recorded through. So it's definitely not a hardware issue if I can do it on this system. What most people think is they're going to come over to settings, they're going to come into audio project, they'll come to output, they have to monkey around with something in here. You don't have to do that either. This right here is just strictly to monitor the audio output that you're listening to. So how do we do this? Well, let me show you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to my sequence. You can see I actually didn't even select all the audio tracks, but that's okay. Let's select them all. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say export. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come down and we're just going to modify our direct out export setting. I'm going to come into options. It's going to be exactly the same here, but what we're going to do instead is I'm going to do a custom export. Once I have custom export, the first thing that's important for me to do is to pick the video format that we're going to want to export. Now I know I'm working in 1280 by 720, which is good. I'm working in RGB just because that was the uh, color space of all the clips I imported. So I'm just going to stick with RGB. Obviously, if you want to work in 601, 709, you can do that. We're going to leave it as the native dimensions. Now the video is good to go except for one thing. I also want to use the Avid codec here. So I'm just going to come into settings. I'm just going to come up to the Avid codec. I'm going to come to the DNX HD codec. We'll come to millions of colors, RGB. Of course, I'm going to choose 720p, 23976. We'll just choose 8-bit, why not? I'll say OK. Now what I want to do is I want to come in and I want to add sound to this. Now once I add sound, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to make sure that my audio rate is 48 kilohertz. But here's the big one. What I'm going to do is the channels right now are set to stereo left and right. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to select stereo left and right. I'm actually going to choose 7.1. 7.1 is going to give me left, right, center, sub, left surround, right surround, and then two stereo tracks if I want it. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that whether we're exporting 5.1 or not really doesn't matter because anything can be on those eight channels of audio. So I'm going to select 7.1. I'm going to say OK. We can prepare for internet streaming if we want. I normally deselect that. I'm simply going to say OK. Now, there's one other important thing that we need to do here before we go. I'm going to come to audio format right here and I'm simply going to choose direct out. Once I choose direct out, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say save as. We'll just call this direct out to override what was there before. We'll say, do you want to replace these settings? Sure I do. I'm going to say save now. Again, we're going to go right back to the desktop, except instead of direct out one, I'm going to call this direct out final. And I'm going to say save. You're going to see it's going to take a little bit longer to export this because we're not using the same as source. We're actually recompressing this file, which is fine because this could be very well, you know, for an approval or who knows what it might be for. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to my sequences, but I'm going to right click and say import. Actually, we're not going to import. We're going to AMA link to just because it's much quicker. I'm going to choose direct out final. I'm going to say open. And as soon as I call this direct out final right up here into the preview window, take a look at that. We now have eight channels of audio. If I switch over, if I toggle the source record and timeline, take a look at what I have. I now have the audio on 1 and 2, on 3 and 4, on 5 and 6, on 7 and 8. And just to make sure that I have this set up the way that I want to, since remember, my audio hardware will only let this play back in stereo, but if I call up the audio mixer here and I simply switch over to the 8 channels, if I hit play now, you'll see them appear. Let's actually come back here for one second. Let's make sure we actually have the right side selected, which is this one here. What I'm going to do, let's see, is there somewhere I can put this? Let's actually just shrink our composer window a little bit here just so I can stick it right here. There we go. Let's preview the right side here because when I preview this, you'll see 
one and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight. So you can see with a little bit of thought in your export settings, you can get in and export audio with eight channels of audio really very easily using MIDI Composer or Symphony. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.